All right, this is a video for all you people who are uh, new into the multi-rotors uh, and you're wondering what flight control board to get. I'm going to compare the 4 KK2.1, the Illuminati 32, which is actually a NACE 32 with a built-in OSD, APM 2.6, and the NASA. Uh, this is the NASA M Lite, but it's easily uh, upgradable to the V2. Um, and so here we go. Now the KK21 is the most versatile board out of the four. If you like to build your own uh, frames, you can build just about anything with this because it's a very forgiving board. You could build uh, V-tails, reverse V-tails, tricopters, pentacopters, anything you could possibly imagine. You could build with a KK2. It doesn't have the best sensors the most stable sensors, but um, but this is a very reliable board. I've crashed mine about 50 times, and they were very hard crashes, and it just keeps going and going and going. So if you want a board that'll just keep going and going, very reliable, and if you want to build your own frames, the KK2 is the best one to get. Now, the NAS32 is tuned the most aggressively, so it's the fastest uh, multi-rotor you can build with this flight control board. However, it's a very unreliable uh, board. Um, you'll have a lot of defective ones that's very difficult to uh, uh, connect to the computer. Um, I've had four boards, NAS 32s, and they all went bad. Um, three didn't connect. The first one connected, but after a very, uh, very light fall, the gyro, um, didn't walk, work properly and the uh, multi-rotor kept swaying back and forth in the z-axis and so I had to return it but if you had one race you had to win and it depended your life depended on it this is the board to use however the reliability is not good this will spend more time in the shop than you will be flying um, and so, I'm not a big fan of the NACE32. The APM 2.6, it's, uh, it's a very good board too. It's, the tuning is probably a mixture of the NACE32 um, and the NASA. It's more aggressive than the NASA, but not quite as aggressive as the NACE32. It's got a lot of features. Um, setup is not too bad. Uh, however, this also has some reliability issues. You'll have some difficulty sometimes connecting to the computer. And um, my personal experience with this uh, APM is um, I had a hex copter going and I finally tuned the, uh, the altitude hold and the GPS. And um, for some reason, uh, when I was flying, it just basically, it was flying like this and basically it just fell over, it capsized like a boat. And ever since that, I, and then it wouldn't work properly. I don't know what happened, I think it was the power module, the power module might have went bad. But um, this also has a little bit of uh, reliability issues too, not as bad as the NACE32, but it's not quite as reliable as the NASA. The NASA is the is the least aggressive of the four as far as tuning, so it's not gonna be a, a racer by any means, but it is the most stable. The altitude hold is the best, and the GPS lock is the best out of the four. So if you're uh, flying a basic quadcopter or a hexcopter or a Y6, and um, you're not interested in really building your own frame, you're not interested in building a multi-rotor with a servo, um, and you're interested in basically getting some nice aerial views and um, and you want your multi-rotor to be very reliable, the NASA is the way to go. So out of the two, you would compare these two because they're kind of the same. They're, the, they're used kind of the, for the same reasons. Uh, they compete in the same market. Out of the two, the NASA is... Uh, my favorite out of the two because it's reliable 
it's um, just keeps going and going too. Um, and so there you go, the four flight control boards, the ones I recommend, KK2, NASA. Nays 32, serious reliability issues. APM, some reliability issues. But once it gets going, it really flies good. It's just um, expect some time in the shop when you fly with the APM. Expect your rig to always be in the shop when you're flying the Nays 32. So there you go.